All right, guys. So today we're going to be talking about the adaptive SAT, the new digital SAT. What is this adaptive testing? How does this all even work? So if you haven't checked out our last video on the main differences about the new digital SAT and the old paper SAT, make sure you go check that out. All right. So with the adaptive testing, this is how it basically works. The SAT is now split up into two sections, right? You have your reading and writing, which has been combined into one section. It used to be two different sections before. Now it's just combined into one. And then you also have your math. Okay, so the first thing that you are going to be taking, if you are taking the digital SAT, which is starting in the U.S. 2024, and the first test is March 2024. If you are international, you probably are already taking the digital SAT. So these this is how basically the adaptive testing works and how College Board sees it. So you have your module one, which is going to be your reading and writing section, right? So the reading and writing section has now been combined, but there's two modules, right? You have module one and then you have module two. Now, how well you do on module one will predict what kind of questions you're going to get on module two. For example, if you do really well on module one and you get a lot of questions right, you are going to get harder questions on module two, right? Now, harder is obviously, it's not, when they say harder, there's still gonna be a mix of different, you know, variety of questions, but let's just say in module one, you got like 10 questions wrong and you didn't do very well, then your module two is gonna be easier. Now, just because you get an easier test doesn't mean you're going to get, you know, a higher score. So don't go into it thinking like I'm going to do really bad on module one or get a few questions purposely wrong on module one so that I could get an easier module two. Because the way that they do the scoring and the way that the algorithm works with the scoring, it basically balances out. So the best advice is just to go into it doing really well on module one, just like you would on the paper SAT. So. Once you take the reading and writing section, you will have a break again, like I mentioned in our last video. Even though this test is digital, that does not mean that you get to take it at home. It actually means that you have to still show up to the test center, to the high school, wherever you're taking it, and take the test with a, you know, with a test proctor, basically. So it's the same thing, same patterns as a paper SAT, just now you are doing it on a computer, right? So after you take the reading and writing section, you are going to go on to the math section. The math section works the exact same way. And on the math section, like I mentioned in our last video, you have the calculator for the entire section. On the old and current paper SAT, you basically have a non-calculator and a calculator section. Well, with the digital SAT, it's just you get to use your calculator on the whole thing. So based off how you do on module one, you know, that's the type of questions that you will get on module two. So if you do really well on module one, then you're going to get harder questions on module two. If you do really bad on module one, you're going to get easier questions. Now, like I said, just because you're going to easier questions doesn't mean you're actually going to get an increased, you know, score. So basically, like this is what I said, module one is going to be a mix of easy, medium and hard questions. And based off how you do in module one, your module two will be a targeted mix of questions of different difficulties based on your module one performance. All right, so the key takeaways from this is we actually ran a quick test using the Blue Book app. So my key takeaway from this is do well on the first module, don't try to game the system. So we did a test where we got basically 10 questions wrong on the first module. So we purposely got 10 questions wrong. And we did get an easier, the easier module two section, right? So on the module two section, we got every single question right, and we still didn't score over a 600. So that means that it's very likely that you will get over a 600 if you don't do well on module one. So the scoring is still pretty standardized. So don't think, you know, I want an easier module two, so I'm going to purposely do that on module one. Don't do that. It's just going to end up, you know, biting you in the butt, basically. So that's key takeaway number one. Now, is the test still standardized? So we are actually going to do a very big deep dive into how is this all still standardized and, you know, all the nuances of the new digital SAT. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you guys subscribe. 
If you are looking for a free SAT math course, make sure you go down to the description. We have a full course with 10 plus hours of video and a bunch of notes, material, extra practice, all in a Google Drive folder ready for you to access down below. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't checked out the last video about the differences between the new digital SAT and the paper SAT, make sure you go check that out right here.